Thank you, Heather. Good morning to you and your family. It's Tuesday, March 3rd. I'm Ainsley Earhart filling in for Elizabeth this morning. We're going to start with this, a Fox News alert. Terror group Boko Haram now taking a page from the ISIS playbook. Brutal beheadings now released on video. Are the two terror groups working together? We have those details. We do. And just a few hours from right now, the Israeli Prime Minister is going to deliver a chilling warning to Congress about making a deal with Iran. But as more Democrats boycott Bibi Netanyahu's speech, speech, are they about to be on the wrong side of history? This is a big one. All right, now Hillary Clinton in hot water again. The former Secretary of State accused of conducting official government business on her personal email account. What was she hiding? What was she thinking? And did she, in fact, break the law? Well, while you think about this, let me reinforce to you that mornings are better with friends. You're watching Fox and Friends. That's a great way to begin your day. Thank you, Don King. <laughs> so, Steve, good to have you back. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Ainsley and I have something in common. We, we were both on flights on Delta that were canceled. I know. We had to call Fox and say, sorry, we're trying to get back to New York. This was Sunday night. But they were so gracious to me. They said, don't worry about yeah. it. Just stay there and get back when you can. Right. They told so, Steve, what do they say? Say, get in a car? Uh, I am still on hold with Delta. So <laughs> right. luckily there is Greyhound bus service between minutes. here and there. It's very long. Anyway, uh, the weather is terrible once again today. And we'll tell you about that in a minute. But right now, a Fox News alert. In just a couple of hours, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is going to deliver a chilling warning to Congress about doing a deal with the country of Iran. It is a speech the Obama administration doesn't want you to hear, even as White House officials are downplaying the tensions with Israel. I, don't, I wonder what he's going to be saying. Kevin Cork is live in Washington with a preview. Kevin, what do we expect? Hey, good morning, guys. Now, anybody who says to you that relations between the two countries have not been damaged by this sort of dust up here in the nation's uh, capital is either naive or lying. That's the truth. Now, yesterday in his speech before APAC, 16,000 plus, by the way, there to listen to BB's speech, he laid out the case against any U.S. deal with Iran. Iran is the foremost state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Look at that graph. Look at that map that you see on the wall. It shows Iran training, arming, dispatching terrorists on five continents. Iran envelops the entire world with its tentacles of terror. This is what Iran is doing now without nuclear weapons. Imagine what Iran would do with nuclear weapons. Strong statement indeed by the Israeli Prime Minister. For his part, President Obama is still trying to tamp down the rift. Listen to what he said yesterday. I don't think it's permanently destructive. Uh, I think that it is a distraction from what should be our focus. And our focus should be, how do we stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon? The relationship between the United States and Israel uh, is one that has been strong for generations for a variety of reasons. Uh, it has been strengthened under the leadership of this president. Expect Bibi to say a bad deal is far worse than no deal. And of course, we'll have live coverage for you here on Fox News Channel today, and I'll have the reaction from the White House. Yeah. Okay, very Thank good. You. Thank you, Kevin Cork. If you watch yesterday's APAC uh, address, one thing, I don't care if you're for the speech or against the speech, man, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu can speak, and yeah. he can motivate, and he can write, and he's certainly co uh, very comfortable at the lectern. And his speech today, I believe, will be very interesting because he's today's exactly, it's going to be nonpartisan, doesn't work to his behalf to be Republican or Democrat, obviously, but I think he's going to reveal new information to try to get in on this, on this dialogue because America's been shut out of this. The P5 plus one, these private meetings, well, they've been briefed. So his, his uh, mission will be, how do I not reveal intelligence that I've been briefed on at right. the same time inform the world what is really going on? And what is really going on is the country of Iran is on the verge of getting the capacity to build atomic weapons. And if they get one, they will blow up Israel. That's just, everybody knows that, that Iran hates Israel. So anytime you hear uh, the, the people talk about about, uh, how the White House and Israel have a great relationship. Right now, that means the relationship is not good. And under this president, it has gotten worse, according to Ari Fleischer, who is President George W. Bush's press secretary. 
you have a president who deliberately came into office saying that he wanted to put distance between himself and Israel, that way he can negotiate, negotiate peace with the Arabs and be the man in the middle. What you have instead is a Middle East where both Arabs and Israelis really wonder about Barack Obama and the vacuums that he's created throughout the Middle East that have now been filled by the Muslim Brotherhood and, and by ISIS. The president's failure to act has led to a much more dangerous Middle East. I thought this was interesting. Last night I was watching Greta's show, mm -hmm. and she was interviewing the former Israeli ambassador, Danny Ayalone, and she said, how, how far away are we from Iran creating right. a nuclear weapon? Are we weeks away? Are we months away? Are years away? He said, we're not weeks away, and we're not years away. We're talking months. Right, right. right but around the, the corner. And the thing right. is, Ainsley, uh, the AIEI, uh, the, uh, the IAEA, which we should be used to because of the years we dealt with Iraq lying and the weapons inspectors that were not given access, they have said the Islamic Republic of Iran has yet to address two outstanding issues relating to the alleged explosive tests and other measures that might have been used in nuclear bomb research. Right. They have not been cleaned since this negotiation started in 2013. So the administration should be showing frustration instead of whitewashing the facts as we know them. That's right. So even the U.N. says that uh, there is no possibility that they can verify whether or not Iran is doing what they had promised. So essentially Iran and the president are both saying trust us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, speaking of trust, is it a break of trust? It's a Fox News alert. On the front page of the New York Times of all places today, there is the bombshell that when, pre when uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton uh, was the Secretary of State, she never, not one day in her tenure, had an official government email. Instead, she conducted all of her personal and official business with a personal email account. By all standards, that breaks the rules because there has to be uh, the ability to verify what was sent. That's exactly right. Many people might archive. say, hey, it's much easier if you use your personal email. She could just what? use her iPhone, whatever. Yeah. But this is the problem. It's a yeah. security breach. This is what sure. the State Department says. The State Department has long had access to a wide array of Secretary Clinton's records, including emails between her and the department officials with state.gov accounts. Well, here's what's unbelievable. Two months ago, the archives just say, hey, by the way, can you get back to us with the emails? Because we have to archive everything you did when you were there uh, with the Obama administration, so she gave back 55000 that she chose to give back. What about things in future uh, generations might want to look at? What about things that people who want to run for president might want to examine? She decides that it's okay right. for, a national, for the Secretary of State to have unencrypted email that anyone can access, and believe it, I know personally, that you could hack into. Why would she be so clumsy? Sure. The, the whole reason we know about this stuff is because of the Benghazi mm -hmm. Committee on Capitol Hill. You know, for p people in the mainstream media, who said, oh, that's going to be a joke. Trey Gowdy has been very serious about going after the email. And the big question is, why was there so little uh, correspondence with Hillary Clinton? Because it was all a personal email. Uh, Jeb Bush has tweeted out this, transparency matters. Unclassified at Hillary Clinton email should be released. You can see mine at, and then you've got it right there. You know what's curious is, uh, I was looking online today, Hillary Clinton's personal email, we know through a hacked uh, WikiLeaks thing, uh, as it turns out, she registered that particular domain the day of her Senate confirmation. So she knew the first day, I'm not going to be transparent. A little strategery there. <laughs> strategery. Yeah, a, little uh, strategery. A, lot, a lot more on this. And the New York Times doing this story just as the Obama administration, excuse me, the Clinton, uh, the Clinton team is looking to deflect and attack back at the series of attacks on her because her and her links to her foundation and what she was doing as Secretary yeah, of State. We want to hear what you have to yeah. say at home, so please send us your emails. It's friends at foxnews.com, or you can send a little comment to us on Facebook. Yeah. Absolutely. Like we know a lot of you are snowbound right now. Many of you are watching at yeah. airports, as Ainsley and I were. <laughs> Go ahead, email us. Hit, with some of, hit, hit us with some of them tweets, folks. You were stuck in Florida there, you lucky duck. Okay, uh, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Remind me, I'm back in Snowville. <laughs> Ainsley, watch him out, the lucky duck. I don't know if that can fly in the morning. Uh, Heather, what, what do you have for us? Good morning. Great to Good see morning. you guys. Good Steve, to see nice you. to have you back. Thank Ainsley, you. great to see you as well. I've got